Oh, hey. How's it going? It's been a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, deciding to make another video. Um, right now, I am making the crawl over to my favorite spot on the island, Goat Harbor, where I spread Jack the Salty Dog's ashes. And uh, it's his birthday week, so we're going to go say happy birthday and spend some time with him at the one of the most beautiful places on the island. So we'll just stay here on the hook for a couple days and uh, yeah, see what we find. Awesome, we are on the anchor again at my favorite place in the world, Goat Harbor. This place is incredible. And uh, it's just uh, about in the middle of the island and uh, there's nobody else here. It's just me and, uh, what is it, a Wednesday? <laughs> but yeah, very grateful. Uh, we're gonna sit on anchor for about an hour. I got my timer set, just see how everything sits. Uh, currently sitting in about 20 feet of water and uh, we're at high tide, should go down about four feet, so we got just good enough for uh, five scope and plus a little extra, why not? And um, yeah, sitting pretty here at Goat Harbor. So right as I came ashore, I was just greeted by this plant that was glowing, just ready to be talked about. So this here is the California fuchsia, also known as uh, Zauschneria or Epilobium canum. And this plant is just a perfect fall blooming plant, late summer, fall. Here we are in September. And uh, this plant is exceptionally pollinated by hummingbirds. Uh, oh, there it is. There's the hummingbird just right there. <laughs> Oh, you hear it. All my birding friends on this channel, please uh, comment on what that was if you could hear it by call. So here it has that real tubular, like reddish orange flower, contrasting this real bright silvery blue color. Uh, real drought tolerant. Here it is right on a coastal bluff. Great plant. This is the California fuchsia. Okay, I'm very much a terrestrial being, a uh, biologist, and um, if any of my marine science people are right here on the channel, I'm pretty sure this is a shark egg. I think it's pretty dried out. I don't know if it still would be considered viable, but um, anybody knows that this is, and I'll post it on my Instagram and uh, see if uh, anybody can identify it. But this is fascinating. You see this like little, like twisted piece of uh, kelp. Very cool. Here's another plant that's just uh, perfect for the coastal bluff, real indicative of this type of habitat. Um, this one here is a Channel Island endemic. Uh, it's called Canstancia nevenii, or the Catalina silver lace. And uh, it's really cool. You see this real lacy-like, white, almost silver uh, foliage. This one here, you can tell, is pollinated by butterflies and other uh, insects that need a landing pad. So unlike the fuchsia we just saw that uh, hummingbirds like, this one and ins other insects really like so they can land on it and pollinate it. So this is the Catalina silver lace or Constantia nevidia. When you're talking about flowers that have a, uh, a, a landing pad for floral visitors and pollinators, uh, nothing does it better than asters. And uh, this one here on the coastal bluffs here uh, is no exception. This is the cliff aster, uh, also known as Malacothrix, and uh, you can see it's just, it just has a bunch of pollinators landing on it. You got these bee mimicking flies, you got hair streaks, you got all kinds of things. Uh, great nectar source. Uh, asters are really cool. Aster families, this is not just one flower, there's actually a ton of different flowers here on this inflorescence. So one of these inflorescences is going to put out a whole bunch of seeds. Uh, sunflowers are a great example of uh, uh, that type of things where you have lots of seeds produced on one what appears to be a flower which is an inflorescence. 
so awesome. You see two different types of pollinating strategies of plants. Uh, you got the California fuchsia with tubular-like flowers that gets pollinated by hummingbirds, as well as the cliff aster here uh, getting pollinated by insects and, and butterflies and other things like that that need a landing pad. So either way, uh, here in the, the warm season, you got an open buffet for insects to come and get some nectar and to have a healthy ecosystem with, uh, with, with pollination. Uh, here on the coast of Bluff. Okay, hard to see, but I think there's about one, two, three, four, maybe five leopard sharks just <laughs> hugging the coast here. They're so cool. They're like little puppies. Thank you.